We could store the login credentials in the user's defaults database. However, user default stores all data in an unencrypted property list file situated in the app's preferences folder. Keeping the username and the password in plain text form inside an unencrypted text file is not a safe choice. If the device doesn't have a passcode set up, attackers can easily access the application's data using tools such as iExplorer. You should never rely on user defaults to store sensitive data. Use the keychain instead. The keychain is a secure database. Its contents are encrypted and accessible exclusively through keychain access APIs. To make it easier to work with the keychain, we're going to build a convenience wrapper around it. We'll be using the security framework, so let's go ahead and import it. Next, I declare the secure store class. Keychain services functions that return, add, update, or delete a specific item rely on a query dictionary that describes the item. Some of the keys and values will be the same for all calls. Thus, we can extract the dictionary setup logic to a dedicated method. We're going to use this method exclusively in this class, so let's make it private. I call it setup query dictionary. And it takes a single parameter, the key that identifies the keychain item. It's of type string, and the method can throw an error. It returns a dictionary with the key of CF string type, and the values can be of any kind. Keychain functions work with core foundation types, that's why the key is of type CF string. CF stands for Core Foundation. The Keychain Services APIs work with values of data type. Therefore, we have to convert the key argument to its data representation. I'm going to use guard because we can proceed if the key data can be created. Equals key and I use the data method and UTF-8 encoding. Now, if this conversion fails, we're going to print an error message and throw a dedicated error. Print error could not convert the key to the expected format. And now we'll need a dedicated error. Let's create it. I'm gonna define an enumeration, secure store error, It conforms to the error protocol, and I add a case, let's call it invalid content. And now let's go back to our setup query dictionary implementation and throw the error we just defined. Throw secure store error, invalid content. Next, let's initialize the query dictionary. The key is core foundation string, and the value can be of type any. The query dictionary's first key is KSEC class, which tells us that it's a dictionary key whose associated value defines the class of the item. These constants are defined in the security framework. We're going to store user credentials in the keychain, so I use security class password for the value. Case class generic password. The next key uniquely identifies the account that accesses the keychain. And the value is the key argument's data representation. And finally, let's return the query dictionary. Next, we create a method that lets us add a value to the keychain. Let's call it set entry for key. The function takes two parameters entry of type string and a key, also a string. The method may throw an error and it has no return type. We'll start with input validation. Neither the value nor the key should be empty. Otherwise, we print an error message 
and throw an invalid content error. Else print can't add an empty string to the keychain. And let's throw the invalid content error. If a keychain entry exists for the given key, we should remove it first. So let's create a helper method called remove entry for key. And we need a key to identify the entry, a type string, and the method may throw an error. Next, I'm going to check the input argument. If it's empty, we print a warning message key must be valid and throw the usual error secure store error dot invalid content we're going to use the sec item delete security framework function which takes a query dictionary as input we can use our setup query dictionary method to initialize the dictionary since setup query dictionary is a throwable method i call it using try and now I can call secItemDelete and pass in the query dictionary. This function expects a core foundation dictionary type, so I have to convert our dictionary to a CF dictionary. As CF dictionary. Alright, we can now go back to our set entry for key method. Try remove entry for key, and I provide the key. This is also a throwable method, so I call it using the try keyword. We'll use the secItemAddKeyChain function, which takes a query dictionary as input. This time I create a variable because we need to modify it after initializing it. I initialize it using our setup query dictionary helper method. To add the value of type data to the keychain, I use the key kSecValueData. The corresponding value is the item's data. Since the argument is of type string, I have to convert it to a data instance. Entry.data, and I use the UTF-8 encoding. Oh, there is a typo, let's fix it quickly. All right. Now I can call the secItemAddKeyChain function. The query dictionary must be converted to a core foundation type. As CF dictionary. The second optional parameter is the reference to the newly added item that's filled after the call completes. We're not interested in this result, so I pass in nil. SecItemAdd returns a status. Let's store it in a status variable, and after the call we can inspect it. If it's not success, then we should throw an error. I'm going to throw a dedicated error here. So let's crawl up to the secure store error enumeration and add a new case called failure. It has an associated value of type OS status. This lets us include the error status returned by the secItemAdd function. Let's return to the setEntryForKey method and throw this error. Throw secure store error dot failure and the status. Now that we can persist the user credentials securely, we also need a method to retrieve data from the keychain. Let's call it entry for key. The key is of type string and it may throw an error. The return string is optional because the value for a given key might not exist in the keychain. I'm going to perform the usual validation for the key. Actually, we can borrow the code from remove entry. The next step is to create and set up a query dictionary. To initialize the query dictionary variable, we'll call the setup dictionary for key method. And the key is the input argument. I need to set a couple of additional query attributes. The keys and the values we're going to use are described in the developer documentation under security, keychain services, keychain items, search attribute keys and values. Since we're expecting a result of type data, I set a boolean true for the ksec return data key. And I want to limit the number of search results to 1. So I set the value for ksec match limit to ksec match limit 1. We expect exactly one entry for a given key. 
Next, I define a variable called data of type any object. And it's optional. This variable will hold the data returned by the keychain function. And then I call the secItem copy matching function by passing in the query dictionary and a reference to the data variable. This function also returns a status, let's assign it to a variable so that we can inspect it later. The query dictionary should be converted to a core foundation dictionary. If everything went well, the function returns success. Any other value indicates a problem. And I'm going to throw the secure store error failure along with the status. If the call to sec item copy matching succeeds, we have to check the return data. I'm going to use conditional binding. Guard let item data. And we expect the data instance. We should be able to create a string instance out of it. I'm using the string initializer that takes a data instance, which is the item data. And the encoding should be UTF-8. Else, we return nil. If the call succeeds and we could retrieve and convert the data to a string, we return it. All right, so that's our secure store wrapper. Now we can use it to persist the user credential securely in the keychain.